Hi guys, it's Aoife from Words of Clover and I'm here to do my weekly wrap up. I got four, almost four books read this week and I'm here to tell you all about them. And the first book I finished this week was an audiobook that I've been listening to for the last couple of weeks and that was Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. And I listened to this on audiobook and it was narrated by Kate Burton who is an actress. She is the actress who actually played um, Meredith's mom in Grey's Anatomy so that was kind of fun. And she did a really, really good narration of this book. I think she got the characters all down really, really well. There's different voices, the different personalities that came across. So Anna Green Gables is about a little girl called Anne who is an orphan and she ends up um, being brought to a place called Green Gables which is a farm run by this older brother and sister and they had originally asked for a boy to help them around the farm but a mistake was made and they ended up getting Anne and instead of sending her back they decide that they will try and see if she fits in and obviously she becomes a really true part of their family and they're like their daughter and they end up lo loving her like their daughter and she just goes on all these adventures around Green Gables and making friends, going to school. Um, she's about 13 when she arrives at Green Gables and Green Gables actually spans a good few years. It goes up until I think she's about 16 or 17, up until up until when she goes to college, which I was surprised by because I thought that maybe the next few books would um, cover that. So I ended up being surprised that the first book did end up spanning so um, so many years in Anne's life because I have been watching um, Anne with an E, which is obviously Anna Green Gables show on Netflix. And there are a lot of differences between the book and the show. The first three seasons of the show kind of span what happens in the first book. So I really enjoyed listening to this book. It was just really fun and sweet. And I really like Anne as a character. I know some people kind of think that she's a little bit too dramatic and over emotional but I kind of like that about her because I think in our lives I think sometimes teenage girls are told to stop being dramatic and stop being over emotional and you know there is that kind of still that thing where women should always be in control of themselves and should no be kind of uh, seen and not heard that kind of thing and Anne kind of completely tears that assumption apart and when she is there you are hearing her talk and talk and talk and you're hearing her opinion on everything that she thinks about and hearing how she feels about everything and I think that's just really great to see as well. I just really enjoy this and I'm definitely looking forward to reading more of the books in the series because obviously now the TV show um, I don't think has been renewed for another season so what happens in the next few books will be completely new to me as well because I kind of had an idea of what was happening in this book because I had seen the TV show so the next few books will be a surprise for me which will be really nice. So I gave that a four out of five stars. The next book I finished this week was Wonderland by Juno Dawson. I buddy read this with Leanne over at Leanne Rose and I'm not actually going to do a really review of this here because I have a full video review of it because I really really enjoyed this book. I gave it a four out of five stars and I will leave my um, link to my video review above if you haven't seen it. And the next book I read was Nightingale Point by Luann Goldie. This is a book that was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction which is one of the reasons why I picked it up and this is set in I think the 90s and it is set in London around this um, tower of flats and we are following a few different um, we are following a few different characters. We are following Mary, who is an older nurse whose estranged husband is coming home to her. And he hasn't really treated her well. He's always kind of been here and there, hasn't really spent a lot of time with her in their marriage. She's always kind of been floating around. And she's really struggling now with the idea of him coming back and her maybe having to end the marriage once and for all and go for and be with someone that she actually truly loves. Then we're following two brothers called Malachi and Tristan. Malachi is 21 and Tristan is 16. Malachi is Tristan's guardian. And Tristan is kind of, he is a little bit of a messer. He isn't really serious about a lot of things where Malachi is quite serious, going to um, university, trying to study, trying to look after Tristan. And Malachi is also Harper broken up over a girl called Pamela who is also living in the flats and they had a brief kind of love affair and because of Pamela's father and um, both his controlling nature over Pamela and his racist attitude towards Malachi and um, their relationship is broken down and they're no longer together so Malachi is kind of nursing a broken heart um, at the start of this book. The first part of this book uh, spans over one day when something really terrible happens um, and this is inspired by something that happened in Amsterdam in the 90s with a terror flats and then I'm partly inspired up by what happened to the Grandfell Terrors in London when that big fire happened and it's kind of how these people who live in these flats and when something happens that kind of destroys their home and what happens both on that day but then in the months after that and how they can kind of almost be forgotten about in a way by the government and by the people who should be looking after them and it kind of explores that. This book is a really good premise and I feel like it has the building blocks of some really great characters but it really kind of fell flat for me. I gave this book a three out of five stars because I just kind of felt like we were building up on these characters but the characters were just I don't know they just weren't they didn't seem to be really breaking through anything. 
Oh, and I forgot we we're also following a character called Elvis who is a man with learning difficulties who is living independently but still needs carers and stuff coming in. Um, he's living in the flats as well and we see his life intertwine, particularly with Tristan's, um, on this day and then we follow him a little bit afterwards as well. Um, and... Tristan and Elvis were the characters I actually ended up enjoying the most um, in this book. Malachi and Mary I actually didn't enjoy as much and I actually found them really really annoying and it's kind of weird because in terms of what happens Malachi and Mary are the people that aren't actually there when it happens they're kind of seeing it from the outside they weren't in the flat when this thing happens they're kind of looking from the outside wondering about their loved ones on the inside but they're the ones that actually seem to be most affected by what happens. They're the ones that really struggle with PTSD and depression and um, the trauma of everything. They're the ones that really can't seem to get over what happened. And while it was great to see this struggle, I just feel like we didn't see them break through it enough or we didn't see those building blocks to from the start of the book to the end of the book. And they actually ended up being like really annoying characters for me, which I don't like to say, but they just really irritated me and also the relationship in this book between Pamela and Malachi kind of made me feel a bit icky because Malachi is 21 and Pamela is only 16 and in the book Malachi is like oh that like he always forgets that Pamela is so young because she seems like such a mature 16 year old but when we're reading her like she's still kind of just a child like she's still only 16 and it's like they, they were having a sexual relationship and it just made me feel a bit gross so it just made me feel a bit gross about that. I just don't like that kind of, that big of an age gap in something that's a bit more modern like this. Um, yeah, it just, I didn't really like that. I do, I do think the writing was good in this. I just think the characters really fell short of what could have been done with them. I kind of feel like we only got halfway there and then the book was over. And then like the end of the book was kind of like five years later and I feel like it was just really skimmed over and yeah I just didn't really like it like the book ended and I was I was expecting more pages and I was like oh it's over that's it so yeah I hate when that happens with a book it just yeah it just really fell flat for me it just didn't work for me at all um so I gave it a three out of five stars and the last book I've read this week I actually haven't quite finished yet I'm only about I have about a quarter of the, quarter of it left about 100 150 pages left um, about 150 pages left and that is How We Disappeared by Jing Jing Lee this was also nominated for the Women's Prize for Fiction and I definitely had to finish this tonight because literally midnight tonight it'll be off my phone and um, because it has to go back to the library so I only have today to read the rest of it so that'll get done. This book is set around a woman who um a woman who was a young girl in Singapore during World War II when the Japanese occupied Singapore. Her name is Wang Di and we are seeing um her struggle with kind of the stress and stra the trauma of looking back at what happened to her during this war and at the start of the book we meet her as an older woman her husband has just passed away and she's struggling with the fact that she never really talked to her husband about their both of their experiences during the war she never really let him talk to her about his experience because it would just bring back the trauma of her own experience during the war and we are seeing through flashbacks um what actually happened to her and the absolute disgusting things and the horrible things that happened to her during the war and then we're also following a different POV of a young boy called Kevin I think he's maybe about 12 or 13 years old and he finds out a secret about his father and his grandmother and he's trying to piece these things together and it could end up being connected in some way to Wang Di and her story so they're kind of coming together slowly. They still haven't quite come together to where I am but I have it kind of figured out. This book is really well written and it is just one of those books that's just really really fucking sad it is just so desperately sad and um, the sorrow in this book about what happened to these women during this Japanese occupation at the hands of the soldiers how they were taken away from their homes and used and abused to the point where the trauma on their bodies is just I, I can't even think about it it just makes every part of my body curl up in even the thought of the pain that they're in constantly um obviously massive trigger warnings content warnings in this book for sexual assault and rape and when I talk about that kind of content I'm not talking about it happening once or twice I'm talking about in a situation where she's used again and again and again 30 40 50 men a day um and the effects that does have on a body and particularly a young girl a young 
girl's body and a body that is already mal malnourished, a body that's not getting the substance it needs. So it is very sad and quite traumatic to read. Um, again, I think the story is really interesting. I know nothing about um, Singapore during the war, knew nothing about this Jap Japanese occupation of Singapore. Would love to read maybe more stories set around this um, time and this setting because this is obviously something I have known nothing about and I would like to read more of. So, so I do think this book is probably going to be a four out of five stars. I will update maybe briefly next week and let you know how I how I found it or if you can look on my Goodreads and see um, during the week as well. But yeah, at the, at the moment I am really enjoying it, but it is just, it's such a sad book. Um, so that's everything I've read this week. Please let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.